Hi, and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So, contrary to popular belief, our senescent cells aren't all bad. In roles such as early organ development and wound healing, senescence plays a hugely beneficial role. However, with age, the excessive accumulation of senescent cells has been reported to cause harm by reducing our regenerative capacity and increasing unwanted inflammation. Today's video is going to be a review of a piece I read that was penned by Akadi Marzin, where he looks at numerous studies that delve into senescence and what we can do to combat those unwanted zombie cells. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Cellular senescence is highly diverse across all types of cells and tissues, which makes studying it very difficult indeed. Targeting senescent cells or zombie cells in an aging organism has shown many benefits in preclinical studies. Numerous clinical trials are currently underway, featuring compounds that either clear out or kill these zombie cells, these are known as senolytics, or compounds that make them less harmful to us, and these are known as senomorphics. Some phytochemicals allegedly have senolytic properties. These are compounds such as fisetin, which you may know is also available now in supplement form. The budding field of senolytic cosmetics is also worth mentioning, although the evidence behind these products is still at present very, very thin indeed. Another option when it comes to fighting off these zombie cells is lifestyle interventions. Preclinical and clinical studies have shown some promising results, which have now been summarized in a new review that was published in the Biomedical Journal. The authors of this paper start with exercise, and there is very little argument that exercise is a powerful anti-aging intervention, but only when performed correctly. Let's start with some rodent studies. In numerous animal trials, various types of exercise have shown senolytic effects in multiple organs and tissues, including the heart, the liver, muscle, kidney, and indeed fat. And many times those effects were beneficial to the animal's overall health. However, the authors note that the relationship between exercise and senescence is by no means straightforward. For example, exercise-induced senescence of fibroadipogenic progenitor cells is beneficial for inducing regeneration of muscle cells following exercise. It's also known that too much exercise can be harmful, including in the context of cellular senescence. One study found that extremely intensive swimming caused senescence in the hippocampus and impaired the memory in some rats. There are also human studies showing that exercise lowers markers of senescence. For example, endurance running was found to be effective at blocking age-related increases in senescence. Another study found that resistance training increased the clearance of senescent cells, even in healthy young adults. Diet can also be an important factor in the context of cellular senescence. Obesity is a major driver of inflammation and also cellular senescence, as is hyperglycemia. High glycemic diets lead to increased production of advanced glycation end products known as AGES or AGES, which have been shown to induce cellular senescence in rats. And dietary protein has always been a massive matter of debate. Many studies suggest that high protein consumption, especially from animal sources, can be detrimental, while others have found that older people should consume more protein to slow the loss of their lean muscle mass. And this disease is known as sarcopenia. Now, high fat diets have been linked to cellular senescence, although this may be down to excessive calorie intake that then results in obesity. Now, other than fisetin, the phytochemicals that have shown promise against cellular senescence include quercetin, berberine, and EGCG, which is abundant in green tea. Also, some probiotics can apparently slow the accumulation of these unwanted zombie cells. Some known senolytics, such as quercetin, have been found to alter the gut microbiota. This, according to the authors, might explain part of their senolytic effects. 
The authors also discuss the subject of sleep quality, which is increasingly being recognised as an important pillar of healthy lifespan and indeed a long health span. While the research on the relationship between sleep and zombie cells is scarce, it mostly points in one direction. In a mouse model, chronic sleep deprivation led to the accumulation of the senescence marker P16. Participants in the Women's Health Initiative study who reported sleep fragmentation and insomnia had higher levels of late differentiated T cells, which may be senescent or near to senescent. Sleep deprivation was also shown to upgrade genes related to SASP and P16 in older adults. This very detailed review suggests that while we wait for powerful senolytics to be developed, well-known lifestyle interventions such as exercise and some phytomolecules such as fisetin and quercetin are generally considered safe and may slow harmful zombie cell accumulation. However, more research is definitely needed, especially in the fields such as senescence and its link to sleep quality. So if this video has sparked your interest in your zombie cells and how you can kill them, um, you may want to know how you can get hold of the supplements that we mentioned in this video. So fisetin, quercetin and berberine are all available from the big three and there are links in the description below to those company websites. Also, if you use the code MYNMN at checkout, you can get between 10 and 20% discount. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. So in regard to this study, my exercise interventions, if you like, are resistance training at the gym. Uh, that's generally weight training for 40 to 50 minutes. And that's on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday. And between 40 and 50 minutes, I do a rucking run on the Tuesday and the Thursday. Uh, my bike has now arrived from the Middle East, my, my uh, mountain bike. So I'm going to get that service and I will then either substitute maybe the Thursday run for a ride or I may continue to ruck and run on a Tuesday and Thursday and then introduce a bike ride on a Saturday, provided she who must be obeyed hasn't tied me up for something else on a Saturday. Uh, my senolytic type supplements are fisetin and quercetin, although I am looking to add berberine again very soon once I get the results back for um, my latest metformin experiment, if you like. As for my ECGC, then there's green tea, uh, which you can see here. Uh, I like to show you that I'm actually walking the walk because I do see a lot of YouTubers running similar channels to myself, tell you how they're doing in the gym uh, and how the results of the latest blood test was great, but they never actually show you anything. Um, when this video airs on Sunday, I will have just got back from the Big Island and my quarterly blood test, my last quarterly blood test. Um, so I will cover all the results in a video which is going to come very soon. This is my green tea setup. Um, I don't know if you can see it. There's a small candlelight under there which keeps this hot for literally hours. So the wife and I, now the weather is cooling down, sit outside at night um, or in the morning and we have a, a few cups of green tea. Um, let me know what you do in the comments of the YouTube video to fight off senescent cells. And if you don't physically do anything at the moment because you didn't know about it, let me know if anything I've mentioned in this video is going to start you doing that. 